recently went to my very first packing party and I've been packing boxes since I was a little girl. And the impact that that had on my family was incredible. It's actually a day I'll never forget because of the joy and the fun I saw in my kids. And I saw a whole church community come together. It didn't matter what age they were, they were serving together inside their community. Father, we're so deeply thankful for uh, the ministry of Operation Christmas Child. What a grand adventure that we get to be a part of. Would you take these gifts and would you use them to open children's hearts to the gospel of Jesus Christ? God, we are so thankful for the opportunity to pack these boxes. And Lord, we pray for these boxes. Lord, that when they open this up, they will hear about the love for your son, Jesus. It challenged me that day. It challenged me to think bigger. It challenged me to be praying that God would use me here in my community with my children's lives, the people in their lives, to reach out to them. We serve a holy God, a God that's called us to serve the world. And these packing parties are a great opportunity to serve here in our own community. There's power on this side of the box. When you invite people from your community, from your church, or from your sports team, from your kids' school, it gives us an opportunity here on this side of the box to share the gospel of Jesus. And so I wanna encourage you, and I wanna challenge you to pray to see how God would use you to impact your community starting with a box. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Maple Grove Baptist Church. Good to see everybody out here on this cool fall morning. Got a few announcements for you, um, starting with the trunk or treat tonight, and that is from 5 to 7 p.m. Remember to bring your prayer buddy a gift if you haven't done so. And Brooke also requested uh, if you want to donate some candy, make sure it's here at the church by 4.30, or you can give her some money and she'll go pick it up. So. Either one of those will work. Uh, next week, daylight savings time. Uh, set clocks back one hour. Uh, somebody probably needs to call me the night before and remind me because I will forget. Uh, also, have a deacons meeting following the AM service next Sunday. November 5th, big day in our country, election day. It's coming up. Please vote, but be in prayer too. So uh, that's a, a big day for our country. Uh, November 6th, prayer walk at 9 a.m., business meeting at 7 p.m. November 9th, Golden Agers Loaf and Ladle, 1 to 3 p.m. It is here at Maple Grove, and there is a sign-up sheet in the back if that's something you're interested in. Uh, November 11th, Veterans Day. November 16th, Thanksgiving dinner, 5 p.m. at Maple Grove. November 18th, Christmas shoe boxes are due, and uh, like Brother Allen mentioned last week, if you do not want to pack one, you can go online and do so. Um, November 21st, Baptist Association meeting at 6 p.m. November 22nd through the 24th, Hearts on Fire. Be in prayer for this. Be in prayer for young people. November 26th, we have a joint Thanksgiving service at 7 p.m. Is that at Mount Carmel? Friendship. 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 So be in prayer for that. It's always a good turnout for that. My uncle is preaching. Okay, Mark Grubb is preaching that. So be in prayer for that. Uh, Brittany gave me an announcement. Brinley's birthday party, November 2nd, Saturday. That's next week at 2 p.m. here at the church. Am I missing any announcements? Anything to add? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Volunteers. Um, we only have very few volunteers. Uh, 
have it build up a little packet shell like every couple of minutes. We'll do one for them as they pass by and they'll just meet you there. Uh, that's about it. Any questions? Anybody? About anything? Okay. <laughs> anything else? Any prayer requests this morning? Remember Carolyn? Remember the three teens that are missing. Uh, the the girl is one of my friend's niece. Um, I talked to her last night and there's literally zero leads as to where and why. Uh, I think the last was that Friday night at like 11.45 or something. On Callahan, Ava was seen going into the bathroom and one of the boys stood there till she come out. But other than that, they don't know, like I said, anything about where, why, what's going on. So they're, one of the boys is 16, the other and Ava are 15. So I mean, they're young. They're young, so. Okay, remember this. I haven't seen Hubert in a couple weeks, so remember him. Any unspoken this morning? Anybody else this morning? Chris, can you lay some prayer this morning? Morning. morning. Anyone had a birthday this week? We do have one. Terry Norton's birthday. He handed me that and said it'd be easy for him if I did that. <laughs> Don't start a trend, Terry, okay? Because <laughs> I forget next time. Uh, how about anniversary? They had anniversary. Salvation birthday. They saw Stan and Will. We'll say happy birthday, Terry. Hey. Oh, here we come. You slow, sister. I should have gave it to you when you took yeah, it. Yeah, you should have. <laughs> Anniversary or birthday? Salvation. 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 Salvation birthday. Oh, you right on time, Emma. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, God bless you, happy birthday to you. Come join us in the choir if you would. If you wouldn't turn to page 94. 94.
Turn with us to 313 if you would. Ushers come and we'll see where I'll connect to. 313. Page four. Right. 
about these girls going to sing this morning. Does anybody else have a song on your heart? Pray for them as they come. Pray for our pastor. Don't forget about Takata practice at 5.30 today. I have Takata practice. I'm going to try to be here for that if you can. Lots of new songs in here. He's going to practice by himself. <laughs> He's going to work on his solo tonight. Counts the stars one and all. He knows how the stand is on the shore. He sees every sparrow that falls. Moving mountains and the seas, he's in control in everything of all creatures, great and small. And he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And he knows my name, and I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see in the light of day, I know I'll be just fine. He knows my name I know what tomorrow may bring I can't tell you what's in store I don't know a lot of things I don't know what the answers to the questions of life but I know in who I have believed. And he knows my name, every step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry. And he knows my name, I'm overwhelmed by the pain, can't see the light of day. I know I'll be just fine, cause he knows my name. He knew who I was when he carried my cross. He knew that I would fail him, but he took the step that I take, every move that I make, every tear that I cry, and he knows my name, and I'm open well by the pain, can't see in the light of day, I know I'll be just fine, cause he knows my name.
Thank you, Kayla, Christy, Chris, Maddie, wherever she went to. Uh, thank you all for singing this morning. Thank you, choir, for singing. Uh, it sounded good this morning. I kind of I enjoyed the choir this morning. Uh, I enjoyed the Sunday school uh, class this morning. Uh, what a wonderful job, Brother Bobby Dunn, in teaching. And I know next week, I guess we're supposed to roll the clock back an hour, right? Well, let's leave it alone and come to Sunday school an hour early. Or, I mean, I mean, if you're not coming to Sunday school, don't you don't change your clock till after church, <laughs> and come to Sunday school. How's that? Okay, we'll we'll give you that hour back after church. Okay, uh, just just having fun with you. Um, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, uh, turn to John chapter 14. John chapter 14, if you'll stand. I'll give you a moment to get uh, turned into the scripture this morning of where, where we will read. Um, I want to thank everybody for uh, pastor appreciation last week. Uh, just so you know, I ate so much food, I was still miserable through Tuesday. <laughs> so... Um, I do appreciate all the cooking and everything that everybody done, and trust me, I was uh, I was miserable through Tuesday. I ate so much, so uh, but you know it's not the food that matters; it's the fellowship uh, that we have in our church. And thank you all for the cards and gifts that everybody has given. We do thank you for all of those, and we'll all right. John chapter fourteen, verse one is where we'll be reading this morning. And we will read down <clears throat> through a few verses um, and, and share with you the thoughts that the Lord has laid on our heart. Familiar scripture. Verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. Uh, ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. And if it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. And whither I go, you know, and the way, you know. Thomas saith unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. How can we know the way? Jesus saith unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you had known me, you should have known my Father. Also from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to your prayer once again this morning. God giving you praise and thanks, Lord. Lord, as we come together as a church and praying together at this time, we're praying that, Lord, if there's someone here or someone watching, God, that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, we pray that this would be that time, that opportunity for them, Lord, to believe and trust in you. And, Lord, as we pray today, we know that, God, as a church, there's many needs uh, within our church family and uh, families and friends, many prayer requests that were spoken this morning. Uh, many requests unspoken as well. Lord, many of our church, Lord, are unable to be here due to uh, traveling, vacations, or, or Lord, sickness that's not allowing them, God, to have uh, the access that they could have or should have. Lord, we just pray that you would help them, God, and help them with a, a recovery and help their health, God, that they could come and be back in fellowship and worship together with each and every one of us that's gathered here today. Lord, as we pray today, we want to praise your name, God, for the comfort and the peace that you've given to those that have trusted uh, in you. God, we're thankful, Lord, for the scripture that we read here, knowing that Jesus is the only way to you. And Lord, we've got to accept that pathway. We've got to accept Jesus is the way. Lord, as we come to you in prayer, we want to be thankful for everything that you've done, everything that you will do. Lord, we just want to be so thankful, God, for a wonderful place that you've given us to come, that we can escape the world and the trials and all the different things that we all face and just focus upon you for just a short time and, and, and praise your holy name. 
In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The scripture that we are reading from today uh, is, is uh, a part of where uh, Jesus has the disciples uh, gathered together. Uh, there, this is uh, the, in the upper room in Jerusalem. Uh, this is the night, this is the feast uh, of the Passover. This is the, the night before, so to speak. Uh, this is the time that they've gathered together in Jesus uh, is not only speaking to them, but also this is the time that uh, up before this time, there was a, a, a Judas was uh, going to betray Jesus, and Jesus had already dismissed him. And uh, he told him, he said, that, that thou doest, do quickly. So he had dismissed Judas, and the re remaining disciples were there, and and Jesus is talking to them about the trouble that's about to uh, come ahead of them. Notice, he said, let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. Uh, so he's beginning to tell them that there will be some troublesome times that it's going to come upon them. He's also telling them that he, for a short time he's got to go away. Now, one of the thoughts that, 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 that I begin to think about is you got to remember for over three years, these disciples were following Jesus and they absolutely gave up everything to follow Jesus. They, they gave up their boats, they gave up their jobs, they gave up their way of life. Some of them probably had even, I don't want to say gave up their family, but they have decided to follow Jesus and family becomes second, and they've given up everything to follow him, and all of a sudden, uh, Jesus is telling them that he's got to go away. Now, I don't know about you, but that would have probably been words that would have probably been hard to understand at that time, but you got to remember Jesus is telling them a lot of things that, that they would not understand until after the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Now notice what he says. He says, if I go away, if I go and prepare a place for you, I will uh, come again unto you and receive you unto myself, that where I am there you may be also. Now, he goes on to say in verse 4, And whither I go you know, and the way you know. Now notice what Thomas said in verse number 5. Now I want to say this, that even though Thomas is the one that asked the question, I have to imagine the remaining disciples probably in their own mind, but not willing to ask, uh, was probably thinking the same thing. Now remember, they've given up everything. They're following Jesus Christ, and, and now he's telling them he's got to go away. In my mind and in their mind, guess what? I want to go where Jesus is going. But guess what? They could not walk the path that Jesus was about to take. They could not do the things uh, that Jesus was about to do. But Thomas asked a question. And let me stop here for just a moment. It's okay to ask questions, all right? If you don't know the answer, uh, please ask the question. Now, now, saying that, guess what? We are people today, and we may not have all the answers, uh, but maybe we know somebody or can study and find the answers. But I know this uh, Jesus has all the answers, all right? Uh, always turn to Him. Thomas said to Him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest now, how can we know the way now now what thomas is saying he's saying lord uh, you're wherever you're going we don't know uh, which way that you're going so how can we know uh, the direction in which you're about to take uh, now let's stop for just a moment uh, and let's back up several books uh, in the bible and let's go back all the way uh, uh, to the beginning in genesis chapter 3 
3, we want to share with you some text and, and kind of put things in perspective this morning. And it's amazing. Me and Lori were talking the other day, and uh, she made the comment. She said, why in the world uh, did Adam and Eve have to touch that fruit? Uh, why did they have to do what they done? Uh, because up until then, everything was perfect. Uh, and that is absolutely true. But notice uh, what has happened here. And we're not, we want to focus on the, the place in which they were. In verse 8 of chapter 3, the Bible says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God uh, uh, walking in the garden in the cool of the day. Uh, And notice this, And Adam and his wife uh, uh, hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God. Uh, Now I want to take that verse uh, and the thought that uh, on a daily walk with God, uh, I imagine this might have been a everyday thing or, or maybe a weekly thing I don't know but could you imagine uh, before sin had entered in uh, uh, the, the being in the coolest part of the day uh, and, and Adam and Eve beginning to walk uh, and talk with God what a picture uh, that is uh, and you know what at that point in time listen everything uh, was perfect uh, listen at that point in time uh, Adam and Eve were happy uh, uh, they were comfortable. They everything was at peace. Uh, uh, there were no wars. Uh, uh, there was no health scares. Uh, uh, there was no trouble. Uh, uh, there was no murders. Uh, uh, there was nobody breaking in to steal your goods. Uh, just everything perfect. Uh, and notice this: there was communion between God and man. Now think about that this morning: communion uh, between. God God and man. But guess what? Uh, uh, Something happened there and it caused man uh, uh, to separate from God. Uh, Now I want to say this. Uh, It wasn't God's fault. Uh, It was man's fault. Uh, So therefore, what that means is man changed. Uh, So for if man has changed, that means that God uh, has never changed. Uh, He's the same today. as he was when he was walking in the garden uh, of the cool of the day. Uh, uh, God's position has never changed. Uh, But I want to say this. uh, uh, Through sin, separation came in. Uh, And while I was studying this, uh, I was reminded, I can't remember their names, uh, but there was a lady here that used to sing a song about 30 years ago or 25 years ago. And the song went like this. I can't sing it. Don't even know the name of it. But it said that Jesus made a bridge uh, with two pieces of wood uh, and three nails. Uh, And what that meant was through his sacrifice uh, and through his perfect life, uh, uh, guess what? Jesus rebuilt uh, the ability for man to get to God. Uh, And through that, guess what? Uh, it is now uh, the way to God. Uh, notice what Jesus said. He said in verse 6, and we'll not touch on the other ones today, but he said, I am the way. Uh, now think about that for a moment. Uh, he said, I am the way. Uh, remember we talked and might have preached on this last week uh, when God come to Moses uh, and he was going to send Moses to the Israelites. Uh, and, and he said, and Moses told God, I'm paraphrasing, uh, he said, God, he said, God, they won't believe me. Uh, uh, what should I tell them? that they may know that that you sent me. Uh, And God responded this way. uh, I am who I am. Amen. Uh, He is the I am. Uh, Notice this. Jesus said, I am the way. Uh, But he also said this. Uh, He said, I am the bread of life. Uh, I am the light of the world. Uh, I am the door. Uh, He said, I am the good shepherd. Uh, I am the 
resurrection and the life. Uh, he said, I am the true vine. Uh, and what he's saying uh, is everything funnels uh, through Jesus Christ. Uh, now I can remember, think about this. Uh, you go back and you watch some of them old war movies uh, or highlights or things. Uh, what's one of the first things that the, an, uh, an enemy or somebody you're warned with tries to do? First of all, they cut communication. Uh, and after they cut communication, guess what? Uh, they start blowing up bridges. Uh, ain't it amazing? Uh, back in the wars, uh, they'd blow up a bridge. And guess what? The next morning, uh, they'd start rebuilding that bridge. Uh, why? Because they're trying to... Uh, uh, make a connection point between one side and the other. Guess what? Uh, there's no way to connect you and us to God uh, unless it is through Jesus Christ. Now, I am a firm believer that words in the Bible mean certain things. Notice what Jesus said. He said, I am the way. That is so important. I know sometimes we, I, I'll, be, I'll be honest with you, church, if it wasn't for spell check, you would think I'm the dumbest person in the world, okay? Yeah, I was trying to spell some things the other day. I didn't have my computer. I didn't have my phone. I didn't have anything around me, and I, it just had to look good. That's all I can say. What I, You say, how'd you hide it? I just wrote a couple things and just made squigglies. So I didn't look bad. But Jesus said, I am the. He didn't say a way. If it was a way, that means there's more than one. There's only one way, and that is through Jesus Christ. I am the way. I was thinking back many years ago, I had the opportunity to work in certain plants and certain areas around the country and I'm talking you you some of these plants are just massive and huge uh, and and just multiple levels uh, and when you get in some of these these manufacturing plants or these some of these power plants I mean, you could get lost in an instant. Huh? And before you can even enter those areas, you have to go through certain training. Huh? And that training was this. Huh? There were certain chemicals that were within the boundaries of the plant in there. And if those chemicals were to escape, guess what? If you breathe those in, you would die. There was no, there was no hope for you. So what you've done is you went through this training. And what they've done throughout those plants is... Is, they, is everywhere you went, they had arrows, and it said this way, or this way, or it was colored. I can remember that the arrows were green. So every time you turned a corner, or went down a corridor, or went upstairs, or stepped, there were arrows pointing green. And even on the floor, in the grating, everywhere you went, there was these arrows that pointed to a certain direction. And what they were pointing to is in case an alarm went off, and you heard that certain sound, you were to follow that pathway. You were to follow those road signs, those signs that were put up, because if as long as you followed those, it meant you're going in the right direction, and eventually you will find a safe place that you can hide in. And I can remember no matter where I went, uh, and there was times that I got turned around, didn't know if I was going east or west, uh, didn't know what floor I was on, you say, Pastor, what did you do? I just followed the straight and narrow. I, I just followed the signs uh, and followed that pathway. And you know what? It always brought me to a place uh, of safety. It always brought me to a place uh, that I could recognize. Uh, listen, uh, Jesus said that He is the way. The way is Jesus it is not a set of rules. It is not a road. It is not a religion. It is not a membership. It is not a denomination. It is not the fact of somebody being good. The way is Jesus Christ. You know, if I had to live, if, if I had to live by rules, you know what, I break them all the time. Let me ask you a question. How many you sped before you on the way here to church this morning? Uh, I see some takers. 
broke the speed limit. If you broke it by a quarter mile an hour, you broke the law. Amen? We're all guilty of breaking the law. We can't keep that law, but yet through Jesus Christ, He is the only one that kept God's law. Man is incapable of keeping God's law. And through uh, Jesus keeping the law of God, guess what? When sin separated us from God uh, through the bloodshed atonement of Jesus Christ uh, and by accepting His plan of salvation, guess what? We are now connected back with God. And between us and God, there is a mediator. Have you, ever, have you ever listened to trials or court systems and you can tell when somebody's got a really good attorney or you can tell when somebody's got an attorney that's inexperienced? I don't know about you, but if I ever go on trial, I want the best one money can buy, okay? Okay. When I stand before God, I want the best one. Who is the best one? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus said, I am the way. The only way we get to this place that he spoke about, in my father's, man, uh, father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place. Verse 3 says, and if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again. Amen. I'm looking for Jesus to come at any moment. Are you this morning? Remember, he said, I am the way. Brother Bobby, would you come get us a song this morning? The sin in the garden broke this bridge. Sin in the garden broke the communion between man and God. But because of what Jesus had done for you and I, He created a way for us to go back into that communion. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 4 says this. Notice what the Apostle Paul is writing. In Ephesians chapter 1 in verse 4, <clears throat> According as He hath chosen us in Him. Who's Him? Jesus. Before the foundation of the world. You were chosen through Christ before the foundation of the world was ever laid. I thought about it this way. Brother Bobby, you don't ever lay a foundation for a house unless you have a plan, right? Before a foundation was ever laid, God had a plan. This is God's plan. Let's stand this morning as we sing.
back again for the Wolf Creek Baptist in Mississippi. So please come to join our service on the promise of a letter. Please know the motion to pledge of allegiance. All those in favor say aye. Aye. All those opposed, like sign. There is none. Motion is carried forward. So we didn't have anything about this again. Uh, a couple other things we need to do real quick. Um, Oh, okay. Go ahead and go. Oh, okay. Okay. Will you get it, please? I can't spell, but I can read, okay? <laughs> All right, so don't forget... Don't forget tonight's services uh, with uh, Trunk or Treat. I guess uh, if you're going to be here, probably get here about 4.30 or earlier to help set up and things. Uh, any other words or announcements or anything before we leave? Don't forget your prayer buddies. Yeah, don't forget your prayer buddies. Also, we have a lot of um, uh, focus on missions in the bulletin. There's the Marshall family and um, Shelly Baptist Center is doing the blanket draw. So there's the Hurricane Relief, and, and there are two boxes as well. Yeah, there's a lot going on, a lot going on. Any other things? All right, Eli, come up here, buddy. Macy, if you can, you come up here. Church, we've got your Bibles and baptism certificates. Be sure to come. Yeah, church got them their Bibles and baptism baptism certificates. My mouse got sorry. <laughs> All right, one other thing is the list. You know, if everybody will, let's dismiss an altar prayer this morning and let's pray for uh, Catherine Gall. Okay, she's facing uh, serious surgery coming up this week. So if y'all will, let's gather in the altar and let's pray for Catherine and Hubert, uh, Tim and Teresa and her family. Let's, let's pray for them. And, uh, pray together. Dear my Father, Lord, we come to you in prayer, Lord, today, and God, as we come to you in prayer, we just pray for Catherine and Hubert and uh, Tim and uh, Teresa, God, that you would help them and just uh, uh, bless them, Lord. Lord, God, we know that uh, the surgery that she's facing, her health, and uh, the issues, God, that she has, uh, Lord, as we pray, we just pray that, uh, God, that first of all, you would be with her and comfort her and comfort God, uh, praying that God that you would help the doctors to make the right decisions, uh, help the nurses, God, as they provide care for her. Lord, we just pray for her well-being and uh, pray, God, that you would help her recover and help her, Lord, that she may uh, be able to come home once again. Lord, you know that she's been there many weeks and months uh, laying in bed and not able to even get up. Lord, we just pray that your loving arms and your comfort blessings, God, that you can give and bring, Lord, would help her, God, and Lord, we want to be thankful for the blessings and that you've given every one of us that's gathered in here today, Lord, we just pray that you would continue to bless and watch over, God, we know that there are other uh, members of our church that, uh, God, that has health issues and uh, uh, reasons of why they can't come, and Lord, we just ask that you bless them and help them as well, Lord, it's been good to be here today. Praise your holy name. And Lord, we're so thankful that you sent your son uh, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could have the way towards heaven. Lord, we give you praise and we give you thanks in Jesus' name. All right, while everybody's up, we got to give Jennifer and her grandkids the right hand of fellowship. Can you come around and give her the right hand of church fellowship? And uh, after that, I promise.